Now, do you remember having one of these? The trusty old Nokia 3310. Easy to use, a battery that would last a week. And let's not forget all the hours of fun we had playing Snake. Over 126 million of these phones were made in the 1990s, so if you've got one in a drawer somewhere, it isn't going to make you rich. But there are some old mobile phones that are worth getting your hands on. Natasha has all the deets. Hello? Hello, Mum? Mum, can you send crisps? She hung up. The Mobile Phone Museum collection now comprises more than 2,000 individual devices and over 3,500 phones in total when you take duplicates into account. Over the last few years, it's been incredible to see the interest in vintage mobile phones growing. And during the pandemic, it was a bit of a frenzy because everyone was at home clearing out their cupboards and lofts and garages. And of course, as they're starting to become more popular as a collectible, prices are starting to rise. Thousands of phones that would otherwise have ended up as landfill have now found their way onto online auction sites. And you won't believe how much some of them are selling for. So the IBM Simon, this product here, is a really amazing product because it's widely regarded as what was one of the first ever smartphones. And they only made about 50,000 of these. So these days, these are commanding about 1,500 pounds, if you're even lucky enough to be able to find one. One that's particularly close to my heart is this one here, the Motorola StarTac Rainbow. Um, an amazing product, really iconic, looks so vibrant, people love it, almost looks like a kid's toy. Uh, this product was the result of Motorola, actually here in the UK, having a load of plastics left over of individual colours from a much more boring phone. And they decided that they could make a modular phone, and this was it, the Motorola StarTac. A genuine version of this phone will cost you somewhere between five or six hundred pounds. But they've become so popular that now there's actually people out there selling these on eBay and they're fakes. They take a black original StarTac, paint all the different bits together and try and sell them as the real thing. Be very careful, even I succumb to one of those. I'm not gonna tell you how much I paid, but it was a bad day. <laughs> A more unusual part of the collection is luxury phones. And believe it or not, there's a super niche market for ultra high-end mobile phones. And a company called Virtu started this. It was a subsidiary of Nokia, and they figured out that like Swiss watches, people would pay a lot of money for a phone. So here we've got the Virtu Ascend 1947, and they only made 1,947 of these. And it's made with the finest materials, titanium, crystal sapphire, finest leather. And this is a niche, unfortunately, Virtu went out of business, so these are quite worth collecting. There's no question in my mind that mobile phones have great potential as an antique of the future. And I'm absolutely sure there's lots of people out there who've got loads of phones in their bottom drawers, and some of those could be valuable ones, so take a look. So, what should you do if you think your old phone could be an antique of the future? Well, do your research. Selling sites are key and can give you a good indication on what a phone could be worth. Don't be in too much of a rush to sell. Keep hold of your phone until the market changes. And keep your phone clean, dry, and protect the screen from scratches. The better the condition, the better the price. And if you want to know more, Ben's just launched the Mobile Phone Museum online. Still to come, we'll find out if Danny Sebastian's decision to deal directly has paid off. More upcycled milking stool action after the break. Never thought I'd say that. Let me see if I can beat my high score.